actually could be doing something else. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was second, so seriously, I'm usually a little more prepared for this. And I have a timer because I, I, I have 10 minutes and I'm going to make sure that I only talk for 10 minutes. Okay, the lowdown on Kidlet. Um, how this topic came about is when Renee asked me to speak tonight, I was thinking 10 minutes, what can I cover in 10 minutes? And, and it's really hard to get, to get into anything, but when I teach at conferences, the um, thing that people ask me more, I <laughs> There we go. Um, the thing that, that people ask me all the time when I teach children's literature is what they want to know is what the different categories are and the age groups. And it's, it's hard sometimes to know where, the, where your work fits in. So that's what I thought I'd cover in my 10 minutes here. Um, so let's start with the fact that 60% of children's literature that is published is fiction and 40% is nonfiction. So regardless of where your interests are, there is room for you in children's literature as a writer. Uh, 70s book, we'll be talking afterwards. Uh, Torn is a great example of the first level that I'll be talking about. Uh, that's the secondary school level. And that's known as Everybody's Heard of YA, maybe stands for Young Adult Literature. It's one of the most popular genres in, in writing today. Uh, it, it actually is surpassing adults in growth. And it's continuing to, and it has been for several years, it started out with the the Harry Potter and the Stephanie Meyer Twilight and all that, but it, it has not slowed down at all. One of the reasons is that adults are uh, enamored of children's literature too. And what is the reason why they are? Because young adult writing is about story. Far too much of adult writing is about ideas. And it, just the story, because that's, one, that's why I actually switched from being a writer for adult fiction when I was still good on the side. But I love writing kids, but because I love story. So younger children who are strong readers, fifth and sixth graders, also read uh, kid lit. Um, the length, if you're writing YA age, the book should be between 25,000 and 55,000 words. You can go up to about 150,000 even, which is a long book even in adult fiction, if you're writing sci-fi or fantasy. And the reason that longer lengths are accepted is because of world building. You have to create the entire universe for the reader. So you can write, if you're a long writer, verbose than uh, lean towards sci-fi and fantasy. Um, uh, YA is written for children between 13 and 17. Some say 12 to 18, but one of the reasons that there's a lot of, of overlap and, and fluctuation in the groups is it's not really about uh, grade level or chronological age, it's about developmental age. So that's really what you should go by in writing. YA is often designed, uh, defined by the age of the protagonist, which should be in that teen range. But more often, the most important thing that defines why it is the voice. The voice has to be appropriate for a teenager. We've got somebody illustrating voice right in the back there. <laughs> yes, I saw you. Uh, that, and voice is so important that if I have time to be in, which I probably won't, uh, I'll be happy to talk a little bit more about that. But moving on, in YA, you need a quick entry into the story. Uh, things happen fast, you need to write tight, and you need to uh, be fast paced, keep things moving. Why is that? Well, if you look at all the distractions that are out there for kids today between their phones and their video games and uh, social media, everything else going on, in order to capture their attention and keep it, you have to make things happen very quickly in the stories that you write. The plots can be complex with several major characters, but there needs to be one character that comes, has to become the focus of the story for, for YA. Uh, themes should be relevant to the problems and struggles of today's teenagers, regardless of genre. And that means even if you're writing for like historical fiction, as I am, the issues that the characters are dealing with have to be relevant to today's teen. Problems with your parents, problems with getting other people to like you, it's really the same, it's just in a different kind of setting. The structure should be simpler than adult novels, but more complex than middle grade. And what that means is in middle grade, you'll have one true plot line. If you're writing for YA, you need to have at least one subplot. Voice is a great indicator also of middle grade. One of my favorite middle grade books is a perfect example of, of uh, voice is Stephanie's uh, book, Billy the Kid is Not Crazy. She just really captures the middle grade voice with that book. Um, these are for ages 8 to 12. And again, the ages are fluid. It's more developmental stage. It's, and the thing about middle grade is this is the golden age of readers. I don't know about you guys, but I became an avid reader. I'm on read to me when I was growing up, but when I was nine is when I could not, you, you couldn't pry a book out of my hand. That's what happens at this age. It's a, it's a transition age where 
sometimes kids uh, can be turned off of reading if they're not introduced to things that are of interest to them. It's very important to make sure that the books capture another great reader's attention, but it's also how the time period where you create lifelong readers. It's one of my favorite uh, uh, age groups to write for. Unfortunately, I tend to write a little bit too old for that. Renee here has one who introduced me as a fabulous military writer. Kids can look at characters this age, which is why you see so many series for middle grade writers. Uh, they'll have as many as 20 books in a series with the same characters. They want to keep following the, the characters through many, many adventures. Um, the protagonists are the same age as the kids. They're between 9 and 13. And uh, they, sometimes the children, but sometimes they're animals or fantasy characters. But even if they're non-human, they have to have the worldview and interests of a human child at that age middle grade age. Um, the fiction genres range from contemporary to historical science fiction fantasy. You don't see very many romance in that, in that uh, age group, probably because why would parents wouldn't want them necessarily reading what passes for romance these days. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but YA is getting sexier and sexier. It's kind of strange. Okay, and non, in nonfiction includes biography, science history, and multicultural topics. So if you want to write for a little bit younger, that would be at the elementary level. Then these are known as chapter books. Chapter books are written for ages 7 to 10 or 12, depending on the level of the, of the reader, uh, fourth through sixth grade. And the, when you write for them, the children uh, need to have, the sentences should be no more than about 10 words. Maximum on the outside is, is 20 words. So shorter sentences, shorter declarative sentences. Most books written at this age level are between 20,000 and 40,000 words. Uh, 45 to 60 manuscript pages long, broken into three to four chapters. Uh, these stories for this age group have a lot of action. The sentences can be a bit more complex um, than, than for younger readers, but the paragraphs are still short, about two to five um, sentences per paragraph. Chapters usually end in the middle of the scene. Why? Because you want to make them read to the next scene. Again, you want to really hook the, hook the children in. The younger they are, the more you need to keep them wanting to read. Oh, time just flies so quickly. Okay. Um, within the category of elementary level, there's also transition books. Sometimes these are called early chapter books. Uh, they're for ages six to nine, and they bridge the gap between easy readers, which is the next level down, and chapter books. Sometimes they have chapters as well, broken into the shorter chapters, two to three pages a chapter, and the maximum of about 30 pages long for, for that group. They have a smaller trend, which means a smaller book size. Books at this age, uh, picture books a lot of times are bigger, that are easier for the children to handle, but they start getting to the age where they're carrying around themselves. And then they're often illustrated in black and white. And in this category also are what's called high-low books. And high-low books are for a high interest, low reading level. And that's actually, there's, there's not enough of that. So if you want to break into the children's market, that's a really good area where you make Things, especially boys, what boys really want to read, um, uh, but at, at with simple language to try to create readers out of otherwise non readers. Uh, those are written in, uh, let's see what I say, 400 to 1200 words. And since they're created for slow readers, you want to have no more than about 11 words a page for that. And then we come to the primary level, and these are known as easy readers. These are for children just starting to read on their own. And they're between six and eight, first and third grades. Children, they read picture books and um, uh, picture story books and uh, e easy, to, easy to read books. Is, that's why they're called easy readers. Imagine that. So these are meant for children to read alone. So the sentences uh, should be average five to six words, ten words at the outside if you're writing for that age group. Most easy reader series, most easy reader series are broken into age groups from kindergarten through third grade. And what, how they are distinguished from the middle grade series is middle grade series, we follow a character through the, each of the books. And I don't know if you remember um, the Scholastic books. When, when I was growing up in school, they had them where, where you had a whole series of them. And often they were topics that complemented each other rather than the characters being the same. It's a big age for nonfiction books. Um, in that level in the series, and the link varies greatly. It can be between 32 and 64 pages with 200 to 1,500 words of text. On the outside, maybe 2,000 words. 
The stories are told mainly through action and dialogue and grammatically simple sentences with just one idea uh, for each sentence. And then picture books. In its broadest definition, a picture book is the, a, a story where the illustrations play as much of a role as the words do. And in, under this umbrella, there are standard picture books. Traditionally, picture books are 32 pages for ages 4 to 8. And the manuscripts are about 1,000 words um, at the outside. Most of them that are being published now are between five and 800 words. Uh, there are no subplots or complications within the main, main plot. And uh, the main character, whether it's an animal or a human, should really embody the child's worldview. You have illustrations on every page or every other page, and the uh, illustrations play a great a role in the text as the words do. Occasionally, there are even picture books that are more than a thousand words long being published now, which is really interesting. They are more books that are going to be read to the children for picture books. Um, they cover a wide range of topics and styles. Uh, Nonfiction picture books can go up to age 10, uh, with about 48 pages in length, 2,000 words. And then there's early picture books, very simple stories for children ages 2 to 5. Uh, should be, uh, the story should involve activities that children engage in on their daily lives, or very simple uh, fairy tales. Um, it's also where you see the ones where there's counting within the stories. Um, and and uh, then that brings us to the babies and toddler books, which are board books. And these are for infants and young toddlers. These are ones where they often are concept books. There's a book on maybe body parts or kinds of animals and, and uh, colors. Uh, they have simple rhyming games, simple stories. Also wordless books a lot in this age group. Typical lengths are 12 to 15 pages. Novelty books are common where you lift the, the flap or they make sounds or they have textures that they're supposed to feel. For babies uh, up to age three, there's almost no text. But for toddlers to five-year-olds, that's when you want the text because those are meant to be read to the children. Uh, if you write for that age group, it should be something that can be read in one sitting that lasts no more than about 15 minutes. And, and your kids are gonna make you read them over and over <laughs> again. So uh, the length of the sentences is five to six words. And I'm looking, I have completely exceeded, believe it or not, the time limit that I've given. So I'm going to stop right there. And thank you very much for your time.